good morning. So today I have Janaya with us who is experienced in creating new technology products in the way of businesses and new service offerings that lead to more growth and more revenue. Let's welcome Janaya on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom where she will tell us about what she has learned along the way and how we can implement those learnings in our journey. Hi Janaya, how are you doing today? Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. The weekend's almost here, Janaya. What are your plans for the weekend? um catching up <laughs> especially with thanksgiving around the corner so do you have definitely. any plans do you do it with family do you usually like roast a turkey what exactly are your plans like that yeah so we have usually um friends come over that don't have family nearby um i grew up actually in texas and i don't have family here my dad worked for american airlines so we didn't always get to get away and see our family in new jersey or miami so um I know what it's like to be alone and want to be near your family. And so we sort of take in the people that don't have families and invite them over to Thanksgiving. So that sounds nice. lovely. That sounds lovely. And I'm glad that people can find a community, especially because I think such holidays usually remind us of how close we want to be with our family. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just can't. So it's great to see that people like you exist who are making an effort and going the extra mile to make sure that people feel at home. So thank you for doing that. So yeah. Jeanette, where do you work? What is your role within the company? And what does the company do? Sure. So I work for Dialexa. We are a technology product development firm based in Dallas, but our clients are all over the world. And we work um, with uh, from large enterprise companies to small startups that have an idea but need a team to help them get the idea off the ground. Um, I think what makes us unique is that we do design uh, we do software as well as hardware. And um, so taking products from concept to fruition, um, we're looking to really transform um, how companies operate and through the products that they develop. Okay. And how did you become a part of this company? Did you apply? Did you know someone in the company? How was the hiring process like for yourself? Yeah, sure. So actually, it's unique um, because I was working on my own startup called Blurt. We were the first meme creation app in the marketplace back in 2012. So over 10 years ago or close to 10 years ago. Um, so I had hired Dialexa to help me build the product. And then um, I was getting ready to go and move to New York to continue my fundraising efforts. And the two founders, the team was very small at the time. I think it was only like four people. Um, the two founders pulled me into a room and they're like, don't, don't move to New York. They're like, come work for us. And I was like, I, but I, I have a startup. They're like, look, like what we're trying to build. And like, they pitched me the vision of like Dialexa and all the startup ideas that they had that they wanted to build. We'll, we'll take your startup, Blurt, and we'll think of ways that we can, you know, something that we can do with it and try to save it. But at the end of the day, like, you have more opportunities with us than you do by yourself. And I was like, mm, that sounds, <laughs> oh, like, reasonable. So I joined as employee number six. Um, I was the only non engineering design hire. So I was the first business hire, really. Um, so uh, both of the founders were engineers. So I came with the lens of marketing sales. How do we get a website up? What are our values? Like, what is it that we're selling? How are we selling it? You know, um, how do we respond to an RFP? So I started at, at that level, sort of moved more into the strategy and strategic, strategic planning as we grew. By the time I left Dialexa. I came back. So I'm a boomerang employee. Um, I left Dialexa. We were about 65 people. Then the market kind of, you know, contracted. The company, you know, was having, struggling like with sales. But then sort of something happened in the shift where it, the growth, um, you know, was exponential. I mean, we doubled in size during the pandemic. So I was called back and I was like, they're like, we need you now. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I left five years ago and then came back. So it's been 10 years that I've been with them, you know, either as a client or as an employee, then left for five years and then came back. So it's been wow. probably not the normal career path for a lot of people, but um, it's nice to be able to sort of, do what I had always envisioned myself doing for the firm. I think 
where we were when I left, it was like the big vision, right? Like I wanted to work on the big ideas and they were like, how do we make payroll? Like, that's what we need. But like, we need somebody to do sales and like make payroll. And I was like, oh, I don't think that that's what I want to do anymore. So I left, but then being able to come back and do that thing that I wanted to do. Um, so, which, you know, I focus on strategy. And so my whole thing is like focusing on new services, new, new opportunities, new products, um, and working on our frameworks and making sure that we can be competitive in the marketplace. So every day is a challenge and every day my brain feels like it has way too many tabs open. <laughs> I think for me, I'm curious because you initially hired them to do some work for you. So you must have left a really good impression on them. So what was your interaction like? For example, a lot of us interact with recruiters. A lot of inter- us interact with hiring managers. How did you manage to leave such a good impression on them, them that would eventually lead for them to offer you a job? What was the interaction like? Yeah, well, you know, so I think as a at the time, so imagine the time frame. It was like 2011. So, and I was a a female founder. I had two other founders, but they had jobs and families and whatnot. So I was really kind of like the main face of the company, and um, every everything was a struggle. I mean, being a female founder at the at that time was like wow, like who who even wants to do this, right? So I think they saw a lot of the challenges that I was going through um, in Silicon Valley, just a lot of the bias. And um, frankly, I don't know what other way to put it other than stupidity by a lot of the like investors that I was meeting in the Valley. At the time, I would come back to them and be like, oh my God, they said this to me. They're like, what? They're a bunch of idiots. Don't listen to them. You're smart. You're this, you're valuable. You know what you're doing. Don't listen to those guys. Like they're just a bunch of idiots, you know? And so it was just kind of nice to have someone who like had my back. I mean, I would say that that's like the thing it's like they had my back and then they knew that I was smart. Even if somebody else out there was like (laughs) kind of making me feel like I didn't have a technical background. So therefore I must not know what I was talking about, you know? And so I I dealt with a lot of that because I didn't have an engineering background. I really relied on them to be my experts. And my thesis and like my intuition was spot on and they confirmed it. And I think 10 years later, I see what Blurt could have become because everyone now has talks and memes and gifs and like it's a it's a fluid language. I mean, there's even keyboards that have like meme search, um, you know, engines So I was like ahead of my time. And I think even for Silicon Valley, um, to some extent, and they saw they saw like my potential and they're like, this girl is really smart and she can see the future. And I think to be a good strategist, you have to be able to see the future and you have to deal with people who are like, no, that's not the way it is or that's not the way it's going to work, but be able to see beyond that and go even further and then be right in the end. Right. And so I think. we had a lot of different, you know, we were in IoT in 2012 before IoT was really even a thing. And so we were making a lot of assumptions, you know, dialect a dialexa about the IoT business. Then again, we were too early because I mean, now, now people know what IoT is. Back then it was kind of still, you know, kind of a new term from a consumer standpoint. So it's just nice to be around really smart people that believe in you, honestly. And I think that's the hardest thing about jobs in general. You can find a job that meets your criteria and you like what you're working on and you like your boss and, and all those things. But I think in order to really have a career and like move ahead, and it's part of the reason why I came back to Dialexa is you want people to like be able to bet on you and believe in you and like want to see you succeed. And I think that is the hardest thing in the world to find in a job. And it's probably expectations to, to set expectations to say, that's what I want to find is probably really difficult. But I do think that, you know, having been a founder, having gone through the trenches with this team, coming out from a lot of different challenges that we had, stepping away and then coming back together has been, I think, a really awesome journey. 
Okay, I mean, I think they did believe in you because they definitely saw that you were capable of doing something. And yeah. being a female entrepreneur at that time specifically, that time specifically, I mean, women are still struggling as much as we like to admit that the ground is leveled. It's not. Women are still struggling. Women are still, even though women are as capable, they still tend to not be offered same positions with the same pay. Yeah. So definitely during that time, I can definitely see how that would have taken yeah. part in them giving you and offering you a position. So thank you for sharing that last question for you would be what is something that you've learned along the way that would be helpful to people that are seeking jobs or who are struggling to get a position themselves so you know it's funny um I went I went to a lot of schooling and you know a lot of people think oh well you know I want to I want to go to these good schools to learn but I want to say that you know you really like any type of school any type of program it's all about the network right and I think early on it was like you know, I have this massive network, but I don't really put it to use. And I think um, something that I read in the last year that I thought was really funny, the word work is a network, which means you have to work it. (laughs) It doesn't just like magically happen. Just because you graduated from the same school doesn't mean that anyone owes you a conversation, especially if you haven't talked to them in 10, 15 years, right? So I think um, being in, don't, talk to people just when you're looking for a job, be talking to people always and be curious and interested in what they're doing and figure out how you can help them. Because two years or three years down the road, when you are looking for a job or you're looking to change companies or you want to make a connection somewhere, having those relationships be more genuine and more up to date, then I'm only going to talk to you when I need something from you, I think is a better way to approach business relationships as a whole. No, no, I love that. I think we definitely need to stop using people as a means Mm -hmm. to an end because at the end of the day, we need to realize that, okay, someone might not be as useful to us, but they're still from come from a different background, different culture. And there's so many, so much that people can offer even by a simple conversation. So I think taking use of that and understanding how people can provide value to you is something that's so important. So thank you for sharing that. But other than that, Jenna, thank you so much for coming on the show. Our time is up. It was an absolute pleasure having you as a guest and learning about you and learning about your experience as a women entrepreneur back in the day and actually now working for a company who value you for your ideas and for your courage thank you yes, so much thank you and also i just want to say we are hiring we're growing so <laughs> if you go to dialexa.com and go to i think it's careers um you will find we're looking for engineers and uh, designers so okay perfect you heard it from her so definitely if you're interested you can reach out to me and i can definitely help you get in touch with her thank you so much okay